Doc, welcome back to another episode. Aaron and our audience, welcome to episode 12. Episode who 12. Who would have thought of that reminds me of... So, this is the third film in our thriller pack of three dark thrillers as part of the MIF 68 and a half Film Festival. Yep. And if you're watching this on YouTube, because we're releasing the video now, uh, as well as our audio podcast. Alongside, yes. We're, we're wearing the same clothes, so we actually have recorded a couple <laughs> in advance. Yes. Yeah. So, we saw three thrillers, the three of the dark thrillers in a, in a row, basically. Um, over a couple of days, and now we're recording all three episodes at once because it's efficient, and it also gave us a bit of time to think about the films a little bit. And this film, the third of the Dark Thriller trilogy, yes, is The Killing of Two Lovers. The Killing of Two Lovers. Really an interesting film, and I cannot wait to hear what you think about it. There's a lot to talk about in this film. Okay, can I just start? I, I want to. I'm going to start. Yes, I loved it. You loved it. I loved it. Awesome. I will just about say I thought it was flawless. Wow, really? Okay, cool. Well, I don't agree, uh, Good. but I'm interested to hear your thoughts. <laughs> I love that you don't agree because then we can have some <laughs> yes. some Margaret and David tension. That's right. We need a bit of Margaret and David <laughs> tension. We just get along way too much, Doc. Yeah, for, for international <laughs> for international listeners, Margaret and David are you know, I know. The, the Aussie. Does everybody know Margaret and David? Classic, they, well-known yeah. Aussie uh, critics that had a show running for about forever. I don't know how long it ran for, but a long time. Yeah, and often disagreed. And they disagreed all the time. Yeah. And that was part of it. He was sort of a fuddy old, fuddy daddy old dude, and she was a little bit. She was meant to be a bit hipper and younger, right? But in the end, they both just looked old. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe I'm David and you're Margaret in this pairing because I, <laughs> I think I often agreed with him. <laughs> really? Oh, that's great. That's great. You know, I often, I often sort of agreed with both of them on certain points and yeah. disagreed with both of them on others. Absolutely. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, I just wanted to get that out of the way that I love this. So you're not going to hear. And let, look, you could talk me into not liking parts of it, but off the bat, you're not going to hear many negatives because I just thought it was an absolute killer of two lovers. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, great. Shall we? Shall we? Look at that. Shall we synopsize? That's not a word, but shall we do it for this film? I think we should synopsize. All right. Uh, I did the last one. Back to oh, you, did you, Doc. Okay. And also, well, you killing... loved it, so I want I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear what your synopsis sounds like. It's going to be full of wonderfuls and exciting. Exciting. Uh, and <laughs> I don't feel there's, there's all that much to say. Like it can be a fairly quick synopsis that we start this film with a couple that has um, separated. Uh, look, it, it starts on a very tense moment where the, the husband, we don't know he's the husband at this point, is pointing the gun at the two lovers in a bed and... We don't know any of the context, but it it unravels that that's his wife and her new boyfriend that he's about to shoot, and I think the there's the noise of the toilet or something that must be a reminder that he's got these kids in his, in the house as well that stops him from doing it, and the rest of the film is is really there what happens to their relationship, but more so I think what happens in the mind of the husband trying to come to terms with what's happened, come to terms with how he's meant to feel about it, his own anger versus his love for his wife and his kids and and I guess inevitably how to handle the new bloke that's in his wife's life and the, the big question that you're – at the end of it all, is what does this mean for, you know, what what does the film say about masculinity, both in general and this and this character's version of masculinity? What it's do you great. reckon? It's great. 
I think the way masculinity is handled in this film is the real strength of it. Like it's, it. I think I came away with this kind of feeling, and and your synopsis is is bang on. Um, I think I'd probably just add to it that I felt like what the whole film was getting across was like this guy was losing control of everything that he had mm. in his life and he did not know how to deal with it. And and you're watching him try to grapple with it. Part of him wants to lash out and just destroy everything. Part of yeah. him wants to be caring and be there and do the right thing by his wife and win her back somehow and, and also raise his kids properly and give them treats and, you know, while he's aware that he's being the cool dad and that's super annoying and, you know, like there's all these like, oh, what do you even do in this situation? How do you behave? What You know, your life was so structured and made sense and now it's all been thrown out. And I thought that was great. Like all of that stuff was was awesome. Really yeah. enjoyed it. I just loved, I know the the male gaze has dominated film for so long and, and and that's why it's so wonderful that we're getting more female voices yeah. in in there, even though still not enough, uh, I guess. But I'm sorry, I just need to, just one step back. The male gaze, like uh, we the male, about, the, sorry, the male the gaze plural. being <laughs> sorry, <laughs> no, oh, the male gaze, lame. sorry. <laughs> we're talking Breakback Mountain. <laughs> the male gaze dominate film. The male okay. gaze. <laughs> Jeez, that sounds odd, doesn't it? No, I just I I. I knew you exactly know what, I mean? what you were getting, saying, but I had to I had to call it out because it was too funny. Yeah, I'm getting all <laughs> university sort of uh, do it class do it on you, but the male gaze being the male perspective, <laughs> as a, as opposed to um, gay guys. <laughs> um, I love it. <laughs> and and you were saying, <laughs> I've got no idea what I was saying. Now. Oh, I interrupted uh, your thought. It was going to be good too. No, it was, but. I, yeah, even though the male perspective has dominated film for a billion years, it's nice to see some complex male uh, char- characters. Like, yeah, you know, I complex agree. in 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 really different versions of masculinity. I, I I think we saw it in First Cow very much, and, Big time. and this this is this is that again. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, no, I, I agree. And this film, and we, I'll, I'll get into remind me of later, but this film reminds me of some, some films that deal with masculinity and the, and how fragile men can be beautifully. And it, this film does it as well. Like it's, it's a gem on that level. Like it's done mm. so well. I've got a question for you though. Yes. It's really getting at the heart of things for you. Yeah. This was in four three or square frame or whatever the kids are calling it these days. <laughs> Insta, Insta ready. Oh um, man! So tell me, tell me about your reaction to that choice. I hated it. Instantly okay. hated it. Um, I just, I just. So there's a few things in this film that are a little artsy fartsy, for the yeah. sake of it, in my opinion, because I don't know what they add to the film to the story. If that yep. that makes sense, um, and 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 I think shooting it in four by three is one of those choices. There are other things that I love, other creative choices. Um, like I thought the opening scene was just such a cool way to open a film, and I, and and I even loved the run, the long run down the street as he decide as he flees the house. Back what do you mean his- you? What do you mean you even love the run? <laughs> that run was You're right, just. No. Wonderful. You're right. I didn't even love it. I totally loved it. It was fucking awesome. And then the titles when they popped up, awesome. Beautiful titles. Beautiful titles. I loved all of that, but it didn't have to be in 4 by 3 No, 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 no. Disagree. Oh, really? Okay. The, but- I, I reckon the first frame was his whole face. Was it Was it his whole yeah, face in the frame? So He's this sort square, of sweating and looking. Square frame. Yeah. I thought that... It when I when I saw the before there was any actual visuals of actors or anything, and I just saw that the the square frame. I just had I had my head head in my hands, and I thought, <laughs> no, Baron is going to hate this, and I think <laughs> I agree with him. So I'd written it off, but then the opening shot of where he filled the frame, I just thought, okay, that's 
that works for me. Mm. That's that's you can't. Well, he couldn't have filled the frame in a in a widescreen, and that claustrophobic sort of attention to the face. Yeah, and it, he, he, they came back to it several times. That that framing. Yeah, they did. I thought it was beautiful. Look, I agree with you that that was that that's impactful. Um, I'm just trying to think. Like, I th- the problem with it is that it it advertises that you're trying mm. to. It advertises something. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. If well, you make a film in four by three, it's a it's it's, it's a how does my art move you statement, right? Mm. And unless you can then back that choice up with a good reason for it existing, then it just feels like fluff to me now. Because I've seen it too many times, you know. But that's, I, but like, that's I, true. I do agree with your argument that that opening shot is gold, and filling the, the the frame with his face is a great idea. You could, I guess, you could make the you could make the argument though that even if it was two, three, five, or sixteen, nine, you could just punch in further and fill his fill his the frame with most of his face. You know what I mean? Like, but the face is that, that shape. Sort of size. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. The, so it was that opening shot and then another one was it when he was singing the song, mm. which again was a very artsy big time thing, but I I bought into it. Yeah. Like I thought here he is singing these lyrics that he's basically, that's what he wants to say and now he's singing them and we're seeing him from this artsy side angle where he's looking away, which is so it's just such a bloke thing. To do, yeah. I, I thought I, I really thought the four three added immensely to that. The, mm. the I think of so we've seen what's been in four three that we've seen the lighthouse, the lighthouse, which I liked and you didn't. Oh no, we I as liked, far as as far as the frame. Yes, yes. I was I was annoyed by it, but it didn't. But that film's so great that you know. Yeah, you, you get great. away with it. Yeah, and then we saw um, *The Five Bloods*, which had the shifting, which I liked. I thought that was I great. liked that too. Um, first cow. First cow was, wasn't it? Yeah, was, see, it was. I, yeah, it didn't bother me, but that's one where I thought, no, not really necessary. Unnecessary. Yeah. Although I love that film so much and it's stayed with me so much that so it has with me as yeah. well. That's why that's the opening night film. That film sticks with you, you know, like no matter what you think about it in the moment, two, three days later, you're still thinking about it and there's, there's a bit of magic in there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it'll stick with me forever. It's great. I really, really like it. It's a great film. And yeah. when, when a film does that, then you realise how it's even better than you originally thought, you know. <laughs> What's up? Oh, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse the cat. Sorry. <laughs> no one. I thought you were like, I'm out of here. No, we're done with no. this episode. It um but just we'll 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 finish with this frame business shortly because okay. there's so much to talk about, but, in my opinion. Totally is. Yeah. But it looked I, I, the 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 running scene for starters, and then there was a, a mirror of that when he's walking away from the camera with his kids to yes. catch the bus. Yes. Very similar framing. Or probably even the same road. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, probably filmed on the same day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they both just looked like a Polaroid, a Polaroid picture. And I just, yeah, you're right. It. I just really, really loved it. And now I'll shut up about it. it the, the whole film has a kind of grungy 16 by nine. Not 16, 16, 16 no. millimeter. <laughs> you I'm wish. Just, I'm just stuck in ratios <laughs> now. Um, like a 16 millimeter vibe to it as well. I don't know what it was mm. shot on, but it has that sort of super grainy. Um, I mean, it's, it, there's clearly been a lot of like, I want to make this look mm. super artsy and like it was filmed in uh, the late 70s or 80s, but it's but it, but clearly not, you know. Um, and I look. Aside from a few of those sorts of choices, I enjoyed a lot of what was uh, what was presented to us in this film. I just think it's really, really clever, really yeah. minimal, very minimal film. It takes a very long time to get to the point, but that's part of the journey and probably something that you loved, right? Mm, loved. Yeah, um, I was. I was a little. I was a little less 
certain about about some of the meanderings, like to get mm. there. Um, but it definitely it definitely pays off in the end, and the the climax of the film is pretty great. Um, without giving anything away, like it 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 definitely builds to something that's worth mm. what worth the wait. And uh, I think maybe. I think maybe one of the reasons why I was I felt a little less impacted by this film or a little less kind of like moved mm. by it was that it has this sort of final um, act, I guess. It's not it's not an act, but after the climax is like a, like there's the final kind of return to the status quo that uh, was at, in one part in in one part really sad and also I don't know, almost annoying like I I, yeah. I wanted a bigger change having gone through all of this. But yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, I want to hear your thoughts on that. Well, I loved it. I just loved how it how it ended. Yeah. I almost feel like maybe at the end of the episode we need to have spoilers and have five minutes on the ending. <laughs> yeah, just to talk about it. Okay, um, let's do that. We'll, we'll, leave, we'll, we'll put, throw in a bunch of spoilers right at the end of the app and if you don't want to hear it, <laughs> don't listen to the end. Let's. There's there's a lot of other things to talk about. One of which, to me, is is the soundtrack. Do you yeah. have any thoughts on the sound? Okay, I loved the soundtrack. There was these car doors opening and closing and mm. revving and stopping and just like lots of really clunky metal and uh, mechanical sounds the whole way through it. Um, I think I wrote down like. Yeah, ratcheting. That's kind of how I've described it. It's got this sort of crazy ratcheting, creaking, thumping soundtrack that's very yeah. disconcerting, very disturbing, but it's it's almost like you're hearing the gears in his head turn. Yes, that, I, I, I had thought things like, you know, mechanical cogs, yeah. gears, all that sort of thing. And, and all, also the feeling of... Uh, half memory half maybe um premonition you know i was i was thinking these are sounds not from right now clearly mm. but we're either looking forward or back or uh just the sounds of his life um and i just found that really yeah unsettling but in a really good way that really made you you feel his his sense of confusion and and hopelessness. Yeah, totally. He's a great actor as well. Isn't he? I, I, I really enjoyed his performance. Um, I, he's one of yeah. those guys that's a little kind of, oh, maybe he's a little bit like, you know, we, we've talked about Joaquin Phoenix a bit recently. He's a little mm. bit like him in some way that he's sort of a little sort of dirty around the edges, very human, mm. you know, um, not clean cut in any way. And that's, and, and yet you just, so relatable because of that. Yeah. I, I saw him and the director uh, doing a quick Q&A at um, Sundance, I think. Mm. And he, what, what's his name? The the actor, Clayne Crawford. Yes, Clayne Crawford. Clayne. And the director is Robert McCoyne. McCoyne. Yeah, I, I need to watch more of his stuff, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and they work together quite a bit, I think. Uh, okay. Well, look, there isn't a lot of other stuff. I mean, it's mostly shorts and docos, by the looks of it, by the, the director's done in the past. I think I think there's a couple of features. Is there? Um, but no, I haven't seen them. So, but mm. I will for sure. Um, but Clayne Crawford made some interesting points about the way it was shot and the impact that that had on the performance. Mm. And what did he bit, say? Well, a bit like what you'd said for. Um, La Llorona, where they put the camera there and just let it let it happen. Yeah. Um, so, Klein said that by doing these ultra um, long shots, is that what you call it? Not not a long shot as in distance. Long long take. Long take. Yeah. Um, it allowed the actors to really inhabit the scene and to to make a have a journey in the scene and often he would um find himself maybe exploring as an actor you know um different things by the fact that he was able to to play it long mm, that's um, cool. as as yeah. opposed to stopping for the for the mid shot or this angle or 
yeah, the film the film has a lot of long shots, has a lot of sort of um, slow pushes and things like that, mm. um, where the takes you can tell are super long. I, I always like that. Um, mm. I always like that approach. And you could, and of course, you can always edit into it. You don't have to keep it. You don't have to run it long. Uh, you know, perhaps sometimes the the danger is that uh, if you've got a long performance, you start to play everything long because mm. you, you know you start to feel like there's you know it's there's a it's a it's arty and it's going to move people <laughs> and stuff. Um, but I don't think the film does that. Uh, I think he's done. I think the edit's good. Yeah, although yeah. it is, there's no getting around. It's arty. Yeah, totally. And, uh, yeah, I just I just bought it for being arty. You know, I actually really enjoyed the father, the or the grandfather in this case, and oh, yeah. and I I expected him to come back at some point because the he, he's set up so well, and then he just disappears. You never come back to him. Not a big thing. I just was waiting for the dad to come back in again because he was such a fun character. Yeah, I thought at the very start he was almost a device. To there was a very um, clear, uh, a cl- very clear image image of of uh, the Clane character David. I think his name is. Yeah. When he's about to shoot his his wife and her bloke, and them in the bed looked so sort of soft and mm. warm and nice, <laughs> uh, and then he goes back to the you know coughing, um, just masculine household with no softness yeah. in it at all. I, I yeah. felt that as, as initial se- an initial setup, that was really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I, that's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how much else I took out of the, the dad character. No, it's just that he, he was interesting. You know, when you hold up, hold up something shiny and then, and then sort mm. of never come back to it again, uh, you, you, it's a little, it can be distracting. Uh, I, I was just waiting for him to be a, you know, in towards the end of the film somewhere and, and he just never yeah. comes back. Not not a biggie because um, in the end he's, I think he is a device and that he's sort of there to say, um, well, David's life has become about living with his dad again and mm. kind of looking after him and this is not the life that he wanted at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it felt like they were just stacking everything on top of him. As yeah. you do, you know, when things go wrong, it it all goes wrong at once. I think the the dad also just reinforced this sense of loneliness in the in the whole ecosystem <laughs> in yeah. that town. So yeah. when when you the neighbor when he um does that job for the neighbor, that other woman, and she mentions the dad, and they're both uh, widowed and. Uh, both lonely, and it just just made the the whole thing seem even more hopeless. Like the whole town yeah, felt totally. sad. Oh, totally. Do you, do you know where in the world we are in this in this film? Is it? I mean, it's obviously North America, but is it Canada or are we like really north in the US? Or I think it's Utah. Utah is it? Mm. I was I, I was trying to place it. Yeah, interesting. I heard Utah mentioned. Like I haven't been it, to Utah, so it I don't just know what... looks so desperate and. Mm. bleak and you know it just like you know one of those little towns in the in the u.s or mm. where where there's just no hope you know like you, you're never going to make much money um although the boyfriend seems to be well off with his flash ute and no, they make a real point of that giving the the new boyfriend <laughs> like a really flash ute and he's got the sort of crappy old f100 how much do you hate the boyfriend though oh dude i hated the boyfriend he <laughs> And he's an actor that I've seen in a bunch of things. Um, uh, don't have his name in front of me, but he's he's good. He's always solid, uh, and he just plays such a dick in this film, and he does yeah. it does it really well. Yeah, he 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 does. You, I think, like it's very much. We talk about the male gaze. <laughs> it's yeah. very much from the male perspective, isn't it? The film, yeah, because you're. You're seeing his um, his wife from his perspective, and you're getting angry. Yes, so angry at her. Oh, she's so annoying. I don't, know, so I don't know if it's just that we're men. <laughs> she is so annoying. But you just you want to throttle her, and it's you're thinking it's all her fault, and yeah. and then you're not sure how to deal with it yourself. Um, <laughs> and and then the the boyfriend, you just hate his guts. He's the stereotypical 
yep. bloke that comes in and, you know. It's even just the small things like when they're at the, the um, it's like a 7-Eleven or wherever they, they are getting yeah. coffee and he's like, yeah, can you just pour that one for me and then, oh, can you pour a bit of milk in there for me as well? Like He's that it's, guy. It's a small thing, right, where you're just asking somebody else to do all the things for you and just expecting that they'll just do it because completely you're just you know you're important and your time's important you know um yeah the little details like that but that was well done because you straight away you dislike the guy you're like this guy's a dick mm. um and then later on it pays off so spectacularly and and that is such a foreshadowing moment where he yeah. he basically gives him everything he wants there's the cream there's the cop you know yes um and yes. then I think after that is one of the moments where he then just hates himself and goes a bit. <laughs> yeah, isn't that where he follows him in the? That's where he follows him in the car. Yeah, and he's yeah. got his gun like he's about to do a drive-by. Incredible. You know that reminded me of uh, of Rose. What's it called? Rose uh, becomes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Rose What's, plays. Rose, uh, Rose, Rose plays. Rose Julia. plays Julia. Uh, in in that <laughs> one, I was very conscious that. And I think we talked about this that you you know that what that Rose is capable of doing something crazy. Yeah. And in this one, when he gets that gun out, you're so you know um, hyped and angry for him, and you know how he's feeling that you think he's you really think he's going to shoot. You yes. really think he's just about to yeah to go crazy. Which uh, you know I suppose that was part of the thing that you know it's. You can do it in a festival film, in, in in and like that's a horrible thing to say on some levels because no film goes out of its way to be a festival film. Um, yeah. Although some do, yeah. some people know, you know, they go, "I'm going to make this film for festivals." Um, uh, but you know, I think everyone secretly hopes that it'll it'll have a wider audience than that. Mm. Um, but like to play to tease people so much and sort of just you know, play on the edge of like this is going to go someplace for, you know, 80 minutes and then in the last 10 minutes to, to finally get there but to do it in such an unexpected way um, on one level annoys me. Like the, on one level I'm annoyed the whole way through that process. I'm a little bit pissed off with it. I'm like just do it. Just do the thing. We, we, want, we want a bit more. Come on. Uh, but on the other level... I totally appreciate it. I'm like, yeah, don't, don't do the thing. Just, you know, no, of course we're expecting it. the thing. So I, I'm, I'm torn by a film like this. And all three of these films in this pack mm. have done that to me on some level where they've kind of taunted me <laughs> with the expectations I have for a film. Yeah. And then, and, but not delivered that. They've given me something different, which is good and bad in my mind. In, in my mind, it's... Five hundred percent good in this instance. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, and and cool. not bad in in uh, Rose plays Julia. And well, none of them are bad. None mm. of them are bad. They're just, uh, yeah, some are more successful than others um, at that for sure. Um, I but loved what... the writing. Yeah, the the dialogue it was just so. So sparse, so little exposition. Mm, just, I agree. I, I, I'd like like to just read the script. Actually, um, it felt totally and, real. All of it felt totally real. Like nothing. It felt like you were watching a film in terms of the dialogue. Like you know, that's not movie speak. That's that's just no, real life, right it's there. Just beautifully written, and yeah, uh, and also they they asked at this Q and A I saw. Um, Asked them if there was any improvisation. Zero improv. Really? Zero. Wow. So, so Because so, a lot um, of it felt, particularly the stuff with the kids where he's talking with his kids, that all felt like they just made that up on the spot. That's well, you know, I think those kids are the director's kids. Oh, really? I think so. And they've been, this is the second <laughs> time they've been in one of his films. Oh, wow. So That's I crazy. think those kids are pretty special. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're, all, they're all great. They're all great. Yeah, that uh, you're probably thinking of that scene in the car when they, they just bought all the stuff. Well, yeah, the, yeah. And there's an extended P 
period where they're all talking about whether they like school or not. Yeah, and, yeah, that that whole bit. Yeah, that whole bit. Oh wow, that's incredible. If that's all scripted. That's it's pretty incredible. Well, apparently. Yeah. Um, wow. It it made it reminded me if we want to morph into reminds me Let's of um, uh, light of my life and the the father daughter relationship. Yes, I not totally exactly agree. the same, but like um, a, a long played out conversation. You know what it reminded me of? Another Casey Affleck film. It uh, reminded me of Manchester by the Sea, oh. big time. This film reminds me of Manchester by the Sea so much. Really? Yeah, a lot. Because it's it's. It's about a man dealing with loss and he doesn't know how to deal with it. Mm. It's very, lots of really similar themes, um, equally sparse, uh, amazing dialogue in both films. Um, I think Manchester by the Sea is a, is a better film and it pays off better, but I think mm. this film has, it, is like a cousin of it. They, they, they feel really related to me. I can't wait to see that. Oh. oh. That's got to be a homework film for you at some point. Yeah, yeah. It's such a great film. But it's not four by three, so just, just so you know, <laughs> you will get the whole – your, your TV will be filled with the image when you watch It'll that film. double the experience. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's always funny when they talk about four three and, and say you, you get to see more, you know, um, above yes. the – I always find it hard for my mind to to it's work that out. It's not true. Yeah, I just think no. You're just see, you're you're just seeing less, aren't you? You're just seeing less of the peripheral. Yeah, I've had someone say that same thing to me before, and it kind of made me stop and think. Wait, is that even right? And then I had to think about it. And I was like, no. You can always frame it the same way, but you're just going to get a bit extra on the sides. Mm. Like, what are you talking about? Because the TV is not a different shape. It's the same shape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I guess it's as a percentage of the right, the of viewing the window. It's a percentage thing. Yeah. Yes. Is, so you are seeing relatively more. Yeah. Of you know the what? I was sky. actually while I was watching this film, I was having the debate you and I are having right now internally in my head, and I <laughs> yeah. was like, "But when you're a human being walking around, <laughs> you have this peripheral vision in your." Yeah. In your like your eyes are seeing all this stuff to the sides. Why wouldn't you just want that? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's more like the real world. But isn't anyway. it funny how arbitrary, like I don't mm. know how many twenty years ago uh it would have been you you if you're seeing something in widescreen, you're thinking you're watching more of a filmic thing. Yes. And it's yes. it's shifting completely. It is. Well, I think that's what this is all about. Personally, I think the whole four by three thing is mm. is a lot. I think if we will get to the root of it, it's a lot of uh, kind of um, artsy filmmakers going. I don't want to make something that looks yeah cinematic because it's so commonplace now. All the TV looks that way. It, you know, it all this looks really sharp and slick, and it's all you know uh, cinemascope and and Hollywood, right? So now people are pushing against that and going, well, no, I'm going to shoot it with a grungy, grainy film and I'm going to do it four by three and, and I'm going to do it black and white and that's going to differentiate because I'm sick of seeing all this slick stuff. Mm. Well, for all, the lever, all the, for all the levels of wankiness that's in that, I think I still buy it. I think yeah. I still, <laughs> You're still when, with it. when I'm seeing a piece of art, I think I want to, feel like it's mm. seeing seeing something in a different way. So that yeah. I don't want it to be just for the sake of it. So, uh, you know, some some fail at that hurdle, but for this one I just felt it added. Yeah, interesting. Look, in the end I didn't hate it. I, I was initially pissed off with it and in, and I did but I didn't hate it after about ten minutes of watching the film. I, you know <laughs> you and if the film's good if the film's good you just you're just in it, you know, you just get absorbed. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, and and the whole, yeah, I I think what um, Robert McCoyne's done with this is like he's he's made something artsy but that also feels really human and real and relevant in the world mm -hmm. today because I think men are losing a sense of their of their power in, mm -hmm. in a way and like their personal 
their personal power in the world, like where they belong and and sort of what they were raised to believe a man's role is in the world. A lot yeah. of that's being stripped away bit by bit um, and people are questioning and, and a lot of it's totally rightly so, like it should be happening. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that men aren't getting lost in the process still. And I yeah. think films like this are starting to get into that, which is really, really interesting. I'm glad the conversation's happening because um, it's all, it can very easily, people can overlook that, just that that men have still been raised a certain way. Yeah. And just because the world's suddenly changing around them doesn't mean that they're going to be able to keep up with it. Yeah, that's a great mm. point and, and spot on. What I liked about this in particular is that it, while it makes that general point about how things are changing for men, uh, the I didn't find that preachy because it was all so personal yeah. to him. So I don't think he was struggling with how the world's changed yeah. or is changing. I think he was struggling with with his own situation and balancing the 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 rage and the tenderness within himself. Spot on. Um, I totally agree. And that's and, what makes it work. Yeah. That's what makes it work and not and not seem like a you know just a a point that the director's trying to make. Love it. Um yeah. I think I think that's exactly right and that's what makes it special. The fact that he was able to ride that line and get that right, you know. Mm. If you think yeah. he got it right, but I I do. I think he did. I think he did. Yeah. Can we the ending like can we just spoil yeah, it? Yeah, okay, spoilers everybody. We're going to go in deep on the on on the ending because I think we need to talk about it. I mean, for one, the film takes such a journey to get you there. And then mm. the ending, you're just waiting for it. You're waiting for the explosion that comes at the end of all this tension. Yeah, you're waiting for I think I I said about 10 episodes ago that I was reading the the Iliad. Mm. Um I'm still only a few chapters. A few chapters okay, in. I was going to say, have, have you made it past the introduction yet? <laughs> I've made it past the introduction, <laughs> but the the whole the Iliad is all about the rage of Achilles, um, and this just felt like the rage of David, mm. um, and that the scene where they they confront the Derek and David is just so full of male angst and ego and yeah and everything about being blokes and you, you, you're seeing you're seeing it play out in two different blokes and they you could almost switch them and they'd be the same nonsensical masculine tussle <laughs> yes yes so david's gone back to with with the kids right um to the mm. to his wife's house and he said, "Go get some stuff, and we're gonna." He's still got them for the weekend. That's 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 meant to be the idea, or for the night. That's right. And mean, and then what happens is, is the girl, the, his, the wife's boyfriend, the new guy on the scene, comes out because they're in a bit of an argument, and confronts David and doesn't want to leave. And you're just telling the guy, "Get out of here! What are you doing? This has got nothing to do with you." But he's just yeah. decided to place himself in the middle. And I reckon he's done it because he's figured out that David was the dude who chased him with the gun on the road, right? Like Ah, uh, you think so? I think he I think he recognizes him and he's mm. gone and also he's a dick, you know, it's probably both. Yeah. But he's decided to put himself in the middle and the way he fronts up to him uh just as a guy like see knowing the way guys front up to each other for a fight. <laughs> yeah, All yeah. of the signs are there. You're they just are. looking at him going, that guy, the second she leaves, is going to turn this on, turn this into a fight. You know what's going to happen. Whoa, whoa. I don't think I did. Oh, really? I, I, was, I was watching his body language. I was like, ooh, this guy's raring to go. I, I actually didn't think that. So that, that, this, no, is, there you go. this is an odd difference. I, I thought he was just being this... I thought he was going to talk it through and 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 try and like he was obviously a pain in the neck and just a disgusting creature, but I, I, I thought his point was to demean um, David just in right in yeah. talking, and I thought that David was going to say no eventually, just have enough of this and just belt him. So I yeah. did not see the violence coming from oh, from Derek at all. 
I was looking at his body language and I was just like, this guy is just waiting. And I thought maybe he was hoping that David would throw a punch. But he was but he was doing the thing of like, he's like, no, no, I need to be here. I'm not leaving. Um, this guy needs basically he needs to calm down. I'm protecting now. I'm the man of the house. You yeah, know, just yeah. doing all that horrible stuff. Did you also notice he had like a he had like a knife no. on his on his uh, belt? Like he had a like a hunter's knife. No, not of, at all. I was looking at that and I was going, oh no, he's going to pull the knife out. And <laughs> I was like, I was really watching him. It was funny. Just thinking, this is this is about to happen. You must and have course, a good radar because I no, I, I didn't see any of it. Yeah, right. Well, that's exactly what happens, right? I mean, she leaves and and he uh, just mm. thro- blindsides David, who, which I thought was a little surprising that he wasn't ready for it. But um, you know, he wasn't really looking at the guy either. So you know, no, I just thought that David was the one that was about to explode so that mm. all the danger I felt was, was coming from, from the David direction. Ah, that's and, interesting. And I'm just thinking he's, he's, this pest is just keeping on pushing his buttons and this bloke is about to legitimately explode and yeah. he's going to destroy his life by exploding. Which is what the film was kind of indicating was going to happen, right? Yeah. So that was, that was a really interesting turn because um, instead he gets a beating and he gets in the car and starts like driving off and crying, which was I also thought was brilliant. Like I thought mm. like so while I had some issues with things like how long the film took to get here, this part of it I just loved. I thought every mm. choice was great, you know. Um, and then so David's driving off after getting a beating and uh, he's – it's like he passes out, right, halfway through. Mm. Yeah. Which was also an interesting choice. Because you don't see that very often. No, it ended in a whimper, not a bang. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he didn't go smashing into a tree or do anything violent. It just, which is what you're expecting, right? What you're expecting. So he's yeah. he's been hit. He's he's crawled back into his car like a wounded animal. Mm. Um, uh, run away, and all that's done outside of his house with the woman he was meant to be fighting for in <laughs> yeah. front of potentially his kids who were probably looking out the window knowing yep. them. So it yep. is the absolute complete humiliation if yeah. you to judge it on a, you know, the on what we would normally judge masculinity. Yeah. He's, he's been completely humiliated on every level and then essentially the film stops. Yeah, well, there is one last bit though. So, mm. yes, it does. But, I mean... Uh, well, he almost shoots his wife in the process as well. The gun finally does get That's fired right. and it's not at the right yeah. person. Um, but then the, this is the bit that kind of frustrated me yeah. is if it had ended there, I probably would have gone, Ooh, wow, what an ending, whoa. But then there's this just this last little postscript of, yeah. the, of the two of them shopping for appliances and him almost getting talked into buying a smart washing machine <laughs> of all of the things. And you can tell he does not give a shit about smart washing machines. And his wife is like, I think we should upgrade because of it's a new. And I'm like, she is so annoying. <laughs> so that was genius. I thought that postscript was genius. Yeah. Because it, oh, cause it, it, um, and he's all tucked in and yeah. it's like he's, he's, he's done everything. He's been um, tamed. <laughs> he um, has. He has. And he was never that wild to start with. That's the thing. Yeah. He's like he sort of had potential for going wild but was inept at that in the end. Yeah. But, but what it, it just leaves, wow. it leaves me with just questions and things to ponder rather than a, you know, a resolution like you're thinking, okay, yeah. is that, is that a happy ending or is that a compromise? Um, yeah. It, and I, I don't know the the answer because in a way, that's what he's been fighting for, yeah, all along. Yeah. And the way to get it has been to, to um, you know, stop the the male nonsense and turn the other way rather than buy into it. So in a way, it's it's the ultimate success but then it's also getting smart washing machines which doesn't seem like 
<laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh. Like it's just it's just it's interesting to think about. It's uh, what a, what a where does that place men on the yeah. world though? Like that the two of them end up shopping for a smart washing machine. That's mm. wow. Hey, we're, we're, we've gone over time, but I want we you. Have. I want your opinion on one last thing, yes. and that is the title of the film. Uh, interesting. Yeah, um, I was wondering about that myself. I don't know. I don't know what it means. What are you, What are your thoughts? Honestly, I. I mean, I. I could guess, but I don't actually understand it. What do you think? Well, I. I. I really liked it as well because it. It. It set up expectation at the start. Yeah. Played. Played perfectly into the opening scene. Um, so the the killing of two lovers in in that respect is a you know what could have happened. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then your part of your mind is thinking all throughout the film. Uh, well, who are the two lovers? Maybe actually, maybe the two <laughs> lovers will be David and his wife, or maybe it'll be the daughter and her boyfriend that's going to appear, <laughs> or I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but but the the last interpretation I thought could be that it, it ends on such a um, I don't know. Strange note. Yeah. I thought maybe the next scene could be Derek actually kills him. Oh, like he comes back. I, th- I thought it was open. It was open oh. to that ending. That that the the rage that was previously David's then yeah. becomes. Oh, that's interesting. The, the jilted lover. So the only thing I could really takeaway in the end was maybe that the killing of two lovers was that he killed that relationship between mm. his wife and Derek oh, yeah. via his ineptitude and <laughs> lameness <laughs> and failed masculinity. His failed masculinity killed their killed relationship. That, yeah, because basically she ends up sort of feeling sorry for him and bringing him back in to the house. Yeah. Which is just... Oh, the ultimate of degrading it is, isn't Although it? he's happy. He's he's probably stoked with that outcome, you know, because that's what he wanted all along. And does she – but does she, does she respect him for it? For, for, I don't – For leaving? For leaving I, I, that? Yeah, I don't know. I think ultimately no. I feel like she's equally – going to be equally as unhappy. Mm. Um, however, she feels like she's been – Punished. Mm. I'm more hopeful about it. I, I tend to, to see more hope in the ending that it's yeah. it's um he's made the decision not to be the typical bloke, even if it's out of just being being comfortable with his frailty. Yeah, and he's then won the day. Wow. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. That, that's look. There's a million ways, and I think there is. It's the million ways that makes me like it. Because you could just uh, keep talking about totally. it. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think I think but partly the ending mm. gave me a bad taste in my mouth. You know, like yeah. it and and it was part of what threw me off with the the film in total a little bit was just yeah. like the ending. Um, because I just I was I I wanted I wanted his his outrage at being ousted so easily from his whole life. Yeah. to be justified in some way or to have a, <laughs> to have a conclusion and it and in my mind um it the conclusion is that he's degraded yeah maybe you're just too much of a bloke baron <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i'm generally not but there was something about this film that really just uh, irked me a little bit yeah. even though i loved so so much of it yeah. and, and i loved the statement in total um it was just his his personal story got to me <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, speaking of endings, we've probably yeah. we've gone a bit long on this one, haven't we? I've yes, done we too have. much talking on it. Uh, lots, there was lots to talk about. <laughs> there was tons. Uh, so do you have anything else before we wrap up and, and watch some more films? No, that's. I'm just um, I'm really enjoying the variety of films that we're seeing. Uh, that's now four films in mm. to MIF. Um, and also I've been watching a bunch of short films throughout, which we will be able to talk about down the track. So. Yeah. And there's there's a lot in there. There's a lot that Miff has to offer in the short film uh, catalogue as well. So 
you've enjoyed them so far? Because I'm going to watch some too. I have, yeah. There's been a real um, variety. And what I've been doing is because there's an animation block and a, a drama block, I've been kind of taking one from each and just sort of back and forth. And that's been fun. Yeah, okay. Good. Mm. I'll do it too. Yeah. And awesome. Yeah. So we'll see. I'll see you and anyone else who's li- bothering listening to us uh, next time. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think our next. I think our next one is um, mid next week. Uh, well, yeah. Yes. We'll, we will. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So, anyway, lots to offer with Miff. And I'll see and you in the next one, dude. That reminds me, it's bedtime. It's bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Catch you, dude. See you, Baron. <laughs>